And incidentally, Cy Ramo, who was at GE from, I believe, about 1945 to 1948. I came in 1950. Now, he, was he in the engineering laboratory or in uh, the research laboratory? Well, I, I really can't remember because I wasn't here. But uh, Well, if he was hired by M.M. M. Mooring, which Boring, I think he yeah. was, he was in the engineering laboratory. Right, and of course, the good story about Cy is he was hired for his violin playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I've got a book by him in, in which he describes that first year, uh, uh, first few years in Schenectady. And uh, who was the uh, president of Caltech? Uh, Michelson? I think Michelson of the Michelson Morley experiment. And Michelson uh, had a dinner for, for a Boring, who was visiting, even though they weren't hiring, but they thought they ought to go every year. And he had a he had a dinner, and he had Cy Ramo and a pianist provide some background music, and uh, that was Michelson's idea to get Ramo hired. I think I don't know, but anyhow, uh, Boring, I think, said we just formed a yeah the Schenectady Symphony just formed in 1935, hmm. and somehow Boring I don't know if he was on the board or what, but he says we need violinists. <laughs> so he hired Cy, I think, on the basis of his violin playing. And, of course, he really hired a gem there. Uh, Cy's uh, technical uh, accomplishments are, are tremendous. Well, when you got here, you also joined the symphony. Yeah, just so it In happened. the violin section, but yeah. Cy was gone. Cy was gone. <laughs> but I think I occupied Cy's seat. Yeah, he was assistant concertmaster. Uh, the guy, so we were at the first stand, and the, uh, the guy over here, whenever the concertmaster was absent, you'd become concertmaster. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Cy and I occupied the same seat. That's my, probably my most famous uh, accomplishment. Well, now he went on directly to form uh, Thompson, uh, Raymond Waldridge, or did, did he go to college and teach and then go to? As far as I know, he went out and worked for, for Hughes Aircraft. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he worked for Hughes, and evidently Hughes was a very uh, undependable guy, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and, and the way I read it in, in Ramo's book was that uh, the, the Defense Department approached Ramo and Wooldridge and said, if you would form a company independent of Hughes, we will give you contracts. Oh, that's the way I understand it. And uh, but TRW, I think, uh, more as an automotive supplier today. Yeah. Today, yeah. But in those in those days, they were involved with the missiles. Sending, more um, like a Lockheed or something. Yeah, yeah. No, he he lives uh, out in California. And he's approaching 100 years old, but, but you've kept in touch with him well, with turn, letters. Yeah, and, uh, well, only because I wanted to get his a, a letter of appreciation from him for, on the 50th anniversary of the Schenectady Symphony, yeah. which I think was 1974. I'm not sure, but or 84, I can't remember. Yeah, they formed in 35, so it would be uh, 85. So I wrote to him and and actually got a letter back from him. That mm -hmm. was a very nice letter. I and we published it in the uh, 50th anniversary program. We got a a letter from Cy, and then our other distinguished alumnus was uh, Skrimmerhorn was his last name. He was a uh, musician, a conductor, and he was actually a conductor of the. Milwaukee Symphony or something, and he sent back a, two great letters. They're very interesting. I, I, uh, I was in charge of putting that program together, and so now I, uh, to the average uh, engineer growing up, I think Ramo is best known for his books. Oh yeah, at Stanford, uh, Les Field taught out of Ramo's book, yeah. and I, I was in his class. Uh, Fields and Waves in Modern Radio, a very strange title. Fields and Waves in Modern Radio. 